So first of all, let's, uh, can you give us the, uh, give me the, uh, your uh, short introduction of the, what you're doing, what are you, the business doing, and then what is your Go Global strategy from probably Mar? Yeah. Um, I'm more from Jelly Button Games. I'm the, one of the co-founders and the CEO. Um, our main business is casual free-to-play games. Our first hit is Pirate King, which is, uh, currently has around 50 million of downloads till today. And we're still going global. Um, this is more or less. You want to talk? What do you want to talk? Uh, well, how about the Go Global stuff? As you were trying to go global, or we should talk later? Yeah, okay. I think so. let's, <laughs> let's talk later. Okay, Massimo. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Massimo. Everybody called me Max. It's easier. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I didn't uh, know that. Much, much easier. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of MusicSmatch. MusicSmatch is the world's largest database of lyrics. I'm not a singer, unfortunately. And um, we have so far more than 50 million dollars mm -hmm. everywhere. And uh, Thank thanks you. for inviting me. All right. Thank you. Andres? I'm Andres. I'm CEO and co-founder of Social Point. We are a gaming company based in Barcelona, so we are most known because of Dragon City and Monster Legends. And to give you some numbers, Dragon City has been downloaded more than 150 million times. So, and we are quite global also. Mm -hmm. um, hey, one, two, hello. Hello. Uh, does, my, does the mic no. work? Is that okay? Hi. Okay. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah. Hello. Um, hello. Uh, I'm Gil. I lead design at City Mapper. Uh, it's a transport app uh, specifically built for the city. Uh, so we take all the crazy data that's out there, try to make sense for it, and build and design a product around it, uh, basically for you to get uh, to find out how to get from A to B. Uh, we're currently live in 30 cities uh, and 10 countries. Um, yeah. Hello, my name is Regina. I lead uh, Google Play BD for Latin America, especially Brazil and Mexico, and it's a pleasure to be here. All right. So uh, let's get started the discussions. But I'd like to make more like interactive uh, the session here. So I will throw there one question to you guys. Then making them more interactions, then, then ask the audience to have, if you have any questions, then please jump in. All right, so the first of all, I would like to ask about the, what is your global strategy actually? Then what is your challenge in the global like, market? If you want to, if you go, go into there, then what's your challenge? What was your challenges? Okay, from Gil. Um, I mean, basically, as you can probably imagine, we're very, like, localization is, is the, key, um, the key thing we had to figure out. Uh, our strategy has always been to, to localize the product very heavily. So whenever we launch a city, uh, we hand design all the transport icons. Uh, we travel a lot to the cities. We, we have people taking care of specifically one city. Uh, so, so also culturally, it's been, it's been always... Uh, the humor, the, the, the kind of tone of the, of, of the app. Uh, also, when we localize strings, uh, it's, it's very important to, to really understand the local tone and, and kind of, uh, we partly solve that by, by hiring people that speak the language and come from these regions. Oh. So it's kind of an in-house sort of, that, that's, that's when it gets so the like most na natural. When native check, in native check in uh, your company. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, I go for. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, for us, uh, localization it's it's everything because you know when we talk about music and lyrics, we're talking about a huge space to provide you some numbers. The number of unique, you know, tracks, you know, music track in the world, unique. So that they are unique in any, just once in a album, it's around four millions. Out of that, like you know, sixty percent of them 
are, you know, mainly English track. But then there's a huge long tail with Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Indian, Portuguese, Italian, German, French, and whatever. So we have actually, in our you know, database, we do cover, we have to cover. So for us, the, localiza the localization is a kind of must. I mean, we do cover more than 80 different languages in terms of content. So the challenge for us is Music Smash is a crowdsourced platform. So, I mean, the more we grow in a country, the more, you mentioned Japan before. Japan has been incredibly important for us because the more we were growing there, the more the Japanese user were adding the content. Mm -hmm. So we give the power to the users to add and localize the content. Without that deep, so, uh, 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 what I want to share is that if you run a co an app, I mean, a content inside your app, whatever you do, from lyrics, whatever, your content must be localized, must be offered, which doesn't mean, as you said, just translate your app. You have the issue of offering your local content. Brazilian, typically, they don't, they like the certain kind of, you know, music, different from German mm -hmm. people, and like, you know, and U.S. different from, from Japanese people. So for us, the, the it's really a must to get the local content plus ensuring the local rights because we pay rights holder in every single place of the of the world, you know. But you know, I must say that it's kind of key challenge and strategy for us. Without that we couldn't really I mean I mean be present in any country, you know. Like for us being in Japan without having Japanese, you know, lyrics, it's kind of so there First, you publish the your application, then you don't localize to Japanese, right? I mean, in general, we, we don't I mean, the application and store listing. I mean, we don't localize it immediately, application. Also, you know, back to, to how to localize the application, you know. Our, our, our you know, goal is we empower the user to translate it. Okay. Yeah, the contents. Yeah, the content. And also the app itself. I mean, when they complain, they said, can you help us? So that's been extremely important too, you know, besides using, you know, the app, some, you know, translation um, tool um, that you offer. Uh, but w we let them adding local content, you know. Okay. So I think that's very important to empower your user and get suggestions from your user. And then, you know, we, we try to listen to any of them, I mean, by analyzing data, I think, all of you guys mentioned a lot of things you can do with Google Analytics. I think that's a key resource for us, you know. Okay. I mean, analyzing continuously data, you know, from any <laughs> single country. Okay. I'm selling so, it. <laughs> I, I would like to move on we have a the game bit, side. Yeah, we have a little <laughs> bit. I will share a little bit different then, aspect yeah. that uh, we are having. I have, so, I have a questions for the game side. All so, right. Uh, I, had a, uh, I had a talk about the culturalize or, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, going to market was culturalized or just localizations? Then Beautiful. I would like to ask them more and uh, Andres about the, how do you think about, you would like okay. to go with original APK in localized language or separate APK to okay. that market? So first of all, I think that everybody, yeah. uh, I think that everybody wants to go global. It's all about yeah. the yeah. efforts, focus, and of course market market potential and cost CPIs are getting extremely high. So as an early developer, you have to be really focused and you really have to put a lot of attention in that. So I would say um, as when we started Pirate King, for us it was we had to think like strategy-wise how to reduce the barrier of localization because it was a very early stage company and game developer and we could not afford a lot of money and, and mm -hmm. a lot of marketing, of course, expenses into go into going global. So save the budget first. Have to if you're okay. an early developer. Um, so what we we really believed is like focus on the product uh -huh. and as as much as you can and make a seamless and a beautiful experience from the product size. So I would recommend for like everybody would want to see there is a beautiful lecture of George Fan, which is the creator of Plants vs Zombies. It's a little bit 2010, but it's a beautiful lecture about how he convinced his mom to play Plants vs. Zombies. 
And we really inspired, of course, by PopCup and a lot of beautiful uh, process they made there. And there he speak about a lot of how to make this process of first engagement and localization. Uh, he has many tricks and very beautiful things. And even not to use more than eight words, pop-ups. And we understood that if we're an early stage developer, we have to use as, as, as much as trick as we can. And we got really inspired from this process. So in Pyrocrim, we embedded those uh, uh, processes. Later on, of course, um, uh, we built this strategy with the Google Play team mm -hmm. and, of course, with our marketing team. And gradually, we started in uh, back, we're located in Tel Aviv, Israel. So we started in Israel and then we started to grow in Singapore and Malaysia and Thailand and all around Southeast Asia without localizing or culture. People told us you cannot get into Thailand without localizing or culturalizing. And we said, we believe that the product is everything, and we believe that we can bring this experience to our users. So in our tipping point, like in our top, it was 450 thousands of installs a day, only from Southeast Asia. Ooh. And 70% of that was Google. And you localized the languages? Nothing. No? nothing. We only localized nothing, the just source. just publishing in the English? Yes. And we, ha we a little bit localized the stores. We used a lot of uh, content community strategy. We worked really close, of course, with the play team, uh, very focused on that strategy. And then combining it both, it was very, very strong. So as an early developer return, um, it's really important to be very focused on what you can do comparing to the market, to the efforts, and then you can combine it to mm -hmm. a beautiful strategy. Okay. And now that we're uh, launching going global, now that we can afford being going global, um, you really have to, again, focus on the emerging markets. And of course, we're aiming to um, Latin America and the US and of course, Europe. So for us, this journey was uh, very strong. Cool. How about the for, for us, we, we always launch the games globally. So we, we check the boxes of all the countries around the world. Okay. No? And then we launch always with one single API because it's easier for us to manage it. And then depending on the results that we see on the KPIs, retentions, monetization, all the KPIs, it's when we start to doing a special focus on some markets. So apart from the core mechanics from the game, we change many, many other things. We change the play store art, we change the title of the game, we market, so we do special marketing actions for each market quite different from one to another. We'll, obviously, we, we, we translate with local partners. Uh, we change the icon, so we have different price points for, for some markets. Mm -hmm. And also, we do some live ops or some offers that are different from one market to another. You have the office outside of the Barcelona? What? Do you have the office outside of the Barcelona? We, we are opening an office in Tokyo, so it's not, okay. we, we don't have anyone uh, physically there, okay. but we have Social Point Tokyo company there, <laughs> okay. but we are, we are willing to, to grow there. Okay, so we have only five minutes, so do we have any question between the panelists? <laughs> if we don't have, then let's move on to ask the uh, audience. Do we have any questions in each other? No? No. Okay. Let's move on to ask the uh, audience any question to the panelists, or or you can ask any questions. Okay. I have a question for you guys. Um, with changing icons uh, globally, like for localized markets, do you guys ever worry about uh, keeping a consistent brand? For your, for your developer company. Is this something you guys have dealt with? You mean changing the brand? Yeah, you keep, you, if you change the, the icon, it could obviously change the, the, the perception of the brand if it's not tied to your brand. Uh, we, like specifically for that reason, we didn't touch the icon because it is, it is part of the brand. And, but what, what we use A-B testing a lot for is, is uh, the screenshots. And so we do a lot of A-B testing on that, but the icon, I think, uh, at least in our case, maybe for games it's a bit different, uh, but for, for being a utility app, uh, I think the icon is, uh, is too much part of the brand. Yeah. 
but I do, I do wish I could, kind of, because I, I would be curious if, if there were, if there were strong effects uh, if if we if we change the the, the icon, but haven't done that. Uh, in my case, I remember one one you know example that really you know scared me. We got a lot of we use screenshot uh, with you know of the app, which you know. Um, recalls, you know, the album chart. So in that case, we had, I mean, a Katy Perry images. Obviously, all these things we paid the rights mm -hmm. for, and she was in a bikini, <laughs> and uh, but she was—it was not a fending picture. We got tons of compliance, you know, by you know, I remind Arabian, you know, uh, users, and th th this was not anything we had even planned, you know, and neither, you know, how could you plan, you know? How could you think you can really offending people? So at that point, we started doing A-B tests with all the, the, the screenshots, and we saw, I mean, these going much better. I think it's like, you know, when you go in, your com in a country you don't know, there might be something that in terms culturally different. And this depends, you know, I mean, country by country, you know, so you have to deep, you know, understand, you know, but you, you should ask your users, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. Since you're growing so fast, I would ever always ask users, you know, get feedback from them, and then you know, A/B testing. A/B testing. Another thing is very useful, I think, you know, which we should all be thankful to Google. It's the beta testing. I mean, I, I say we have like 15,000 beta. I say we have 15,000 employees for free. People testing your app immediately since you release and providing you feedback. That, that's kind of amazing. But not, not, not all hubs are using that. For us, we have, we have changed the, the icon. I mean, for example, Monster Legends, we have changed the icon between, for Japan, we had one specific icon, or for Europe or the US, we have other icons. And also we have changed the icon inside the same region. So, for example, now we launched a new version of the game that we have alliances and we changed the icon from the previous one to, to a new one. But when we do these kind of changes, we, we are worried about the brand and it's a good point. So we try to maintain the essence of the icon, keeping the, the, the core of the icon and adding a loop saying to the users, hey, there is something new in the game or, you know. So we, we take care of the brand, making changes on the icon, but carefully. One question here. Hi, thanks. I'm Alexis from Republic Labs. A uh, question maybe more for uh, more and Andres. Um, the price localization uh, part, um, do you, how important is it, the price localization? I mean, for example, I'm thinking of a country like Latin America where maybe certain games have a hard time monetizing. Um, do you see a really important effect on not just on revenues but also maybe on retention and as part of that if you have a multiplayer game which is your case do you see maybe uh, players kind of communicating and complaining hey i'm paying this in the us and you're paying that and how risky is that we we have not seen that users complaining from one region to another so what we normally do we i mean for example latam it's 20 percent of our dau and it's 4% of our revenues. No, and if you, if you check the payments, the, the type of payments that they have there, it's totally different to what we have in Europe or what, to what we have in the US. So we have done changes on pricing. Uh, we have seen improvements from 10 to 25% in some regions and some markets. So it's, I would say it's, it's important to have the prices. Uh, I wouldn't do it at the beginning. I would launch the game, see which is the DARPU, the RPPU that you are seeing, and then do improvements to try to boost revenues by 10, 15, 20% of those countries. Uh, just to uh, add here, uh, I think um, we've been actually doing some price experiments in the region, and definitely this is something new in the emerging markets. I'm not talking only for Brazil and Latin America, but all the emerging markets. Google actually is investing quite a lot we are putting not only uh, the technology there, but really people there. We are spending consumer market. We are really educating these users to buy digital goods. We are not in Japan that people are used to buy digital goods, or US or UK. 
these people are just learning how to use smartphones and engage with uh, digital goods or games or apps. So we need actually to educate that. Uh, we just launched local forms of payments in, in Brazil and Mexico, for instance. So until last year, we didn't have only international credit cards were accepted in the mm. store. So this is something that it's a big effort that we've been doing, not only in Latin America, but all the emerging markets. And we're going to be pushing that and educating the, 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 the users. But I definitely believe uh, changing prices specifically for some markets are important. It's very hard for you because there are a lot of markets, no? So I would recommend maybe prioritize. OK, what is my maybe 20% uh, of the installments are coming for that market? Is that a, a market there that I have to explore? And if, yeah, if yes, try to find out what is the right pricing point or what, what are using actually, what is the user behavior at that market to really build your strategy? But this is something that we're going to be investing quite a lot in the next months and, and years. And, and if you think that most of these emerging markets, like 80% is Android, it's a big thing. So this is, we are, we are really working to make sure that users understand that they can consume and they, they store. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that is our approach. Well, I, also, apart, apart from pricing, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have some more time or not? Uh, we need to finish that. <laughs> but, okay. You know, if you have any comment, then you can. No, I know Alexis, so I, I can okay. chat with him <laughs> then, later on. <laughs> you know, ask, ask him then later. So, all right. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, joining us. Then, uh, then uh, okay, let's finish the Go Global sessions. But if you have any questions, then please reach out, reach out, uh, reach out us, then ask the questions. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then, Thank you, and then give the uh, the big uh, applause to the panelists.